Good morning and welcome to this service of Holy Communion from St George's Church in Wash Common on this, the third Sunday before Lent, when we hear Jesus talking about kingdom values and the blessings that are bestowed on God's people. So as we come before God this morning in worship, May we give thanks for the blessings that are bestowed upon us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And in preparing ourselves this morning, we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Most, Most merciful God, God Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In responding to God's love and compassion, we say the Gloria. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our special prayer this morning with the worldwide Anglican communion throughout the world. Eternal God, whose Son went among the crowds and brought healing with his touch, help us to show his love in your church as we gather together and by our lives as they are transformed into the image of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now have our first reading. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. 
For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. This is the word of the Lord. We now have our gospel reading. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. He came down with them and stood on a level place, with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for the power came from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day, and be a leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors, ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, your word be our rule, in it may we rejoice. Your glory be our aim, your holy will our choice. Amen. Well, there are all sorts and types of Christians, aren't there? Uh, all sorts of different shapes and sizes, even different temperaments. We're all unique, we're all different. But some, perhaps, are what I might call glass-half-empty Christians, always holding that they do not fully understand or quite prepared to hide behind a claim of not knowing enough of biblical uh, teaching or perhaps not being able to spend enough time with God. Perhaps you too may describe your faith with a certain timidity and self-effacement, a faith where self-doubt paralyzes any future development. Alternatively, there are full-glass Christians, self-confident, self-assured, boldly claiming for themselves all the promises of God as being well-placed within their library of Christian knowledge and understanding, self-sufficient. Perhaps today's gospel holds lessons for both. See, our gospel reading is, I think, best understood by placing it within its real context. Just before our passage, Jesus has selected the central 12 disciples. And following our passage, it leads into a longer teaching where Jesus lays out a radical countercultural behaviors as the basis for relating to one another, the basis of the kingdom of God. 
and it is clear in today's passage that Jesus is addressing his disciples directly, not the crowds. He looked up at his disciples. In other words, he fixed them with his eyes. This is for you. In the verse immediately after our passage, Jesus says, I say to you who listen. It is a message for the church. See, Jesus is introducing a topsy-turvy, upside-down, inside-out way of relating to one another. He calls his disciples to shun the expected norms of their contemporary society and to love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do not judge and condemn, but forgive. There's a radical ethic of generosity towards others. It is a response not predicated on the behavior of others, but cuts across the natural responses to react with grace, hope, and confidence. Now, all this immediately follows a dramatic demonstration of the life-affirming ministry of Jesus. The disciples must have looked on in awe, excited, but also fearful of what they're about to get involved in. Surely, such demonstrations are not for the faint-hearted. Perhaps some would have felt totally unprepared, ill-equipped to make any significant contribution to the ministry they are being invited to participate in. Others may have felt emboldened and eager to grasp the status and abilities this may bestow upon them, perhaps more interested in who this makes them rather than the benefit they may give to others, eager to grasp the abilities for the personal status it brings. To both of these, Jesus has words to say in an allegory of the blessings of the kingdom of God. He hooks what is to follow on the familiar feelings generated by poverty, hunger, distress, and oppression, situations of lacking and hopelessness, and their corollary of plenty and sufficiency. To those who feel they lack the abilities who are fearful of failure and disappointment, Jesus calls them blessed. Not because of what they lack, but of what they will gain by openly admitting their emptiness before God. A recognition of their dependence on the grace of God to provide what they need. Blessed because they lay themselves open that through the grace of God, they will be filled, they will laugh, and they will rejoice. Those whose faith resembles an empty or half-empty glass are blessed, not because of their situation, but because of the opportunity and the promise that lies before them. It is a transformation from submission to resistance to stand against those situations, and we all have experienced them, which drain us of all that affirms our life with God. It is the promise of being filled with the grace of God which transforms our outlook. It should turn us at least from being a glass half empty to being a glass half full. Conversely, those who feel self-assured, confident in their own abilities, who proudly maintain they have their own sufficiency before God, whose understanding brooks no challenge, then to those, Jesus says, woe to you. A different reversal awaits. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.
let us affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the, Father, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Elizabeth is now going to lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear us when we pray in faith. Hear us as we pray for the church and the world and give thanks for your many blessings upon us. We pray for the church as it seeks to spread the light and truth of the gospel throughout the world that is so in need of the good news. Grant each of us the courage we need in sharing your love with others. Bless all who minister in your name, praying especially for those in our benefits of South Newbury as we give thanks for them and all they give to our church communities. Grant guidance to all involved in the negotiations with Embourne Church in seeking your will for the future of that community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our beautiful yet broken world, a world in need of healing at the present time. As we look beyond our country, we see places where there is fighting, conflict, devastation due to natural disasters and the pandemic. In our own country, we see discord and anger among those appointed to govern. Lead us all in the ways of justice and peace and grant to all people the desire to respect one another in freedom and truth. Bless all who dedicate their lives to caring for our planet. Awaken in each of us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it, and teach us to care creatively for all its resources. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for our families and friends, the communities where we live and work and worship. May we as a church community find ways to reach out to all who live and work in Wash Common. As we prepare for the Queen's Jubilee celebrations, help us in making plans to be mindful of those among whom we live and have yet to meet. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who are in any kind of need at this time. We remember those who are struggling financially, those who need to use food banks in order to eat, those whose needs are forgotten by society and those who feel abandoned. Look with compassion on all who are sick in body, mind or spirit. Grant them comfort and strength. 
Bless all who care for others. Give them patience and gentleness in their tasks. Father, bring healing and peace into all our lives. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who in recent days have journeyed forth from their earthly life to reign with you in glory, remembering especially those whose deaths were untimely, those who died through accident, violence or disaster. Comfort and strengthen all who mourn the death of a loved one at this time. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for ourselves as individuals and as a community working together that we may seek in all we do to show forth your love in our lives. Be with us, Lord, in the coming days as we come to terms with the many changes that our daily lives bring. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we are all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace, peace be with you. With you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. 
it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. And so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, call into mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. George, St. John, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave Jesus Christ to be for us the bread of life, that those who come to him should never hunger. Draw us to the Lord in faith and love, that we may eat and drink with him at his table in the kingdom where he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. In giving thanks to God, we say, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, in terms of notices, just a few things. We've got a lot going on as we start to prepare and think about Lent. First of all, uh, we have the Benefice Quiet Day with Bishop Olivia at St Mary's uh, Convent in Wantage on the 5th of March. There is a sign-up sheet in our churches, but 
If you can't come to church, but you feel you would like to go, please contact Alex in the Benefice office. We also have, uh, join Lent, uh, speakers that are coming to us. Um, one is uh, the 15th of March, which is the Reverend Canon Richard Pierce, and he's going to explore spiritual wisdom of the Psalms for today. And again, um, on the 24th of March, we have Reverend Canon Philippa White, who is going to look at the poets with a special focus on female writers. We also have our own Benefice Lenten Reflections uh, this year um, with a theme around Teze, and that is going to be offered on Sunday the 13th of March and the 20th of March at 4 p.m. at St George's. Please do check the um, notice sheets and also details are on our website. Oh, I think that's all the notices for now. So as our worship is coming to an end, may we pray for God's blessing on each and every one of us. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those you love this day and for all days. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.